Here's a guy whose name you might not recognise. He's a chemist by the name of Leo Bakeland. Back in 1907, Leo here came up with a brand new wonder material, the name of which you might recognise. It was called Bakelite, and it was the very first true synthetic plastic. Bakelite marked the birth of an industry that's now become almost as vital to modern human survival as the food we eat and the air we breathe. And that gives us a bit of a problem, because the very fact that this stuff is in almost everything and is pretty much indestructible means that when we throw it away, there's a lot of it, and it's pretty much indestructible. And that is placing a catastrophic and completely unsustainable burden on our environment and oceans. So are there any real alternatives to help us kick our plastic addiction? Hello and welcome to Just Have a Think. It's difficult to deny that as a material for versatility and durability, plastic is a pretty amazing invention. Most modern plastics come from petroleum, which is refined from oil, which is essentially a bunch of once living organisms that died and decayed and got compressed into a sticky black carbon rich gunk over the course of a few million years. So if plastic comes from something that's basically an organic material, why is it such a problem? Well, as usual, that's where human ingenuity came into play. We worked out that if you take propylene, which is a component in petroleum, and heat it up with the help of a catalyst, then you can persuade the molecules to join up into a chain that's linked together by extremely strong carbon to carbon bonds. That molecular chain is a polymer and polymers make plastic, in this case polypropylene. But that's not a reaction or a material that nature has ever created. Nature does make polymer-like materials, they're called peptides and they're made using bonds of nitrogen to carbon. Nature prefers this method because it takes far less energy to create those bonds than to create bonds of carbon to carbon. Peptides occur naturally in proteins and other organic molecules and they've evolved over millions of years alongside organisms that have become perfectly adapted to decomposing, usually to get fuel for themselves. But those organisms have never had to decompose carbon to carbon bonded polymers, so they've got no metabolic way of doing it. And that, in a nutshell, is the issue with man-made polymers. We've produced more than 8 billion metric tonnes of plastic since the middle of the last century, almost 7 billion tonnes of which has ended up as waste. Only 9% gets recycled, with the rest either going to landfill or getting incinerated or just getting dumped in the world's oceans where it causes the damage to wildlife and ecosystems that we've all seen on our TV screens in recent years. So why not just use naturally occurring nitrogen carbon bonded peptides to make all our modern plastics? That way they'd all decompose back to nature as soon as we're done with them. Trouble is, they don't start decomposing back to nature when we're done with them. They tend to start decomposing more or less straight away. And that is not ideal. So the challenge is to find materials that tick all the boxes of modern day human existence without causing the disastrous consequences that plastics have brought to our planet. That's a pretty big goal, but the good news is there are a few existing and developing technologies that look like potential candidates. First up is a biopolymer known as liquid wood. The term biopolymer encompasses a whole raft of polymer materials that are not derived from oil. Liquid wood has actually been around for several years. It's made from lignin, which is harvested from the wood pulp churned out as a byproduct at paper mills. The pulp is mixed with water under high heat and pressure to create a material that's strong, moldable and non-toxic. It's already in use in commercial products like dinnerware and some toys and sporting accessories like golf tees. According to this report by the industry journal Bioplastics News, the US Department of Energy's National Renewable Energy Laboratory has developed a process for converting lignin into a substitute material for nylon, opening up a whole new range of replacement possibilities. And the best part is, because it's made of wood, it can be recycled as wood too. Staying with the woody theme, a company called Future Mura has developed a product called NatureFlex, a cling film material made from cellulose which is derived from FSC certified wood pulp. The uncoated version is ideal for wrapping chocolate and confectionery and also works well for household items. Then there's a semi-permeable option which can be used for fresh produce and dairy. Cellulose looks to be a very encouraging basic ingredient for eco-friendly plastic substitutes. Another somewhat unlikely cellulose source currently under development is the humble soybean. 
A team led by Professor William Chen at Singapore's Nanyang Technological University has developed a biodegradable food wrap made from the soybean pulp-like residue left over from the production of soy milk and bean curd. Using a fermentation process to liberate the cellulose from the residue, the team has created an alternative to plastic food wrap that utilizes otherwise discarded food waste and is fully biodegradable. Next up is polylactic acid, or PLA. PLA is also made by a fermentation process. In this case, it's the fermentation of the starch produced during the milling of cereal crops like corn and wheat. It's actually been around for about half a century or so, but until recently, it was a niche product mainly used in medical applications where its ability to decompose over time is a very useful feature in things like sutures. But now that the public perception of plastic pollution has reached such a global level, the manufacturers of PLA have of course spotted a commercial opportunity. PLA looks and performs very much like polyethylene, which just like its cellulose-based competitors, makes it a good option for food wrapping materials. But it can also be used as a substitute for polystyrene plates, cutlery and food grade containers. Unlike oil-based plastics, PLA is made from plants that absorb carbon dioxide as they grow, so there's no net increase in carbon dioxide from its raw materials. This 2017 study suggested that switching from conventional plastic to PLA could cut US greenhouse gas emissions by 25%. Although PLA won't break down any better than normal plastic if it's just tossed straight into landfill, it can be processed at industrial composting facilities where it's continually subjected to heat and microbes. Under those circumstances, it completely degrades in two to three months. The hope is that this biodegradable polymer will ultimately replace polyethylene terephthalate, or PET, which is what most water bottles are currently made of. In 2016, almost 500 billion water bottles were produced all over the world, and that number is set to rise to almost 600 billion by next year. And that's an enormous amount of plastic. And although PET can be recycled, in reality, fewer than half of the bottles bought in 2016 were actually collected for recycling, and just 7% of those collected were turned into new bottles. The vast majority of the empty bottles that get chucked into the bin every day end up in landfill or in the ocean. Here in the UK, a company called Greenlight Packaging have developed a product called EcoFlow, which is also derived from cornstarch. EcoFlow is a fully compostable, loose-filled packaging alternative to the dreaded expanded polystyrene pellets that waft into every corner of a room as soon as a delivery box is opened. It's been certified as suitable for domestic or municipal composting, and it dissolves easily in water, which also helps eliminate the problem of littering. And how about this for a bit of blue sky thinking around that water bottle waste problem? These things are seaweed water bubbles, literally an edible water bubble made of seaweed. To be absolutely precise, it's a double membrane made from sodium alginate and calcium chloride. The two compounds combine to generate a transparent gel wall that's solid enough to conserve the liquid inside. You can eat and drink the whole thing, which means you will personally be doing the biodegrading, if you get my drift. But if you're one of those people who insist on the old-fashioned method of drinking liquid from a cup, then you might still be unwittingly contributing towards one of the smallest and biggest plastic problems of our modern age, the plastic drinking straw. According to Milo Kress of the American campaign Be Straw Free, Americans alone use around 500 million plastic drinking straws every single day, all of which are single-use plastics and 90% of which will never see the inside of a recycling plant. Instead, they find their way straight into landfill or into the ocean, where their size and shape make them particularly dangerous to larger marine life, as this somewhat harrowing footage shows us only too clearly. One startup company called Lollyware has developed an environmentally friendly alternative that they refer to as a hypercompostable seaweed straw. These straws are designed to biodegrade in water in just a few weeks. They're made from 100% food grade material and despite their excellent biodegradability credentials, they have a shelf life of up to 24 months and can withstand 18 hours of continuous use. Lollyware says its goal is to completely replace plastic straws used at high waste venues like stadiums and fast food restaurants. Next up is bamboo. We all know bamboo is a fast-growing, highly renewable, natural material, but it's got lots of features that make it a very good candidate to replace many types of oil-based plastic. It can be grown without fertilizers or pesticides and in different environments all over the world, including China, Africa, South America, and the USA. It's completely biodegradable. It produces 35% more oxygen in the growing process compared to similar plants. 
it requires far less water than other similar crops, it very rarely needs to be replanted, and it can actually help rebuild eroded soil. The production costs of bamboo are extremely low due to its high volume availability, and it doesn't need much manipulation or compositional change to make it into lots of different and very useful products. Commonplace examples on the market today are things like flooring, cutting boards, plates and serving trays, as well as cutlery and chopsticks. They also provide a bit of competition in the drinking straw substitute market. Bamboo is even being used in the clothing industry, but a word of caution is needed here. Some pretty nasty chemicals, including sulfur and sodium hydroxide, have to be used to extract the cellulose fibres from the bamboo that are then used in the production of bamboo textiles. And those chemicals can cause harm to soils and local ecosystems if not very carefully controlled. So a considerable amount of development is still needed in this arena before it can be regarded as a truly environmentally friendly fashion alternative. But of all the plastic products we use in our modern day lives, by far the biggest and most impactful sector is packaging and plastic carrier bags in particular. Despite initiatives like the Bag for Life scheme, every year an estimated one trillion plastic bags are consumed worldwide, a great number of which are still only used once before being consigned to the dreaded landfill or a life on the ocean waves. And one of the regions of the world where those bags are most noticeably spoiling the sandy beaches of an otherwise perfect paradise is on the islands of Indonesia. Solving that pollution problem became the passion of a Balinese entrepreneur called Kevin Kamala, who saw the potential in a locally abundant, starchy tuberous root plant known as cassava. Kamala developed a process to extract the starch from the cassava plant and combine it with vegetable oil and organic resins to produce a 100% bio-based material which is biodegradable and compostable. The material will naturally break down over a period of months on land or in the sea and it can also be instantly decomposed in hot water at about 80 degrees Celsius. The startup company called Avani has attracted huge interest around the world and in March 2019 Virgin Megastores in the UAE replaced all of its plastic shopping bags with Avani's bio cassava bags. And of course you and I can do our bit to reduce our own plastic use in our everyday lives. We touched on all the obvious stuff that most of us could easily do without like plastic bags water bottles and drinking straws as we went through the list of alternatives but I can highly recommend these two little books which together contain well over 150 tips and suggestions for clearing out as much plastic from your life as possible. They only take a few minutes to read through but they could make a massive difference to your own impact on the planet. I'll leave information on both of the books in the comments section below so you can get hold of a copy for yourself. If you want to join in the fight against plastic pollution or the wider climate change mitigation challenge and you'd like to do that by supporting the Just Have a Think project, then come and check out our Patreon page where you can take part in monthly polls to decide future program content on the channel and contribute your own feedback, ideas and local initiatives to the project. Special thanks go out to the folks who since our last video have pledged $10 a month or more at Patreon. They are Mindorgus Dijaitis, Gordon Melsom, William Hyman, Frank Parsons, Lawrence Butcher, Lucius Ambul, Barbel Winkler, Malcolm McCoy, Kurt Van Hoy, David Brettel, David Rowe, and Pedro Joseph. And of course, to everyone else who's joined the Patreon Collective since last time too. That's it for this week. Please do give us a like and a share if you found this week's video useful and informative. And if you haven't already done so, please consider subscribing to the channel. It's completely free to subscribe, but it really does show your support for the work we're doing, and it massively helps to raise our profile with the YouTube search engines. And if you also hit the little bell icon, then you'll get notified whenever new content gets released. It's dead easy to subscribe. All you need to do is click down there somewhere or on that icon there. As always, thanks very much for watching. Have a great week, and remember to just have a think. See you next week.